The next part of our assignment is to create the overpainting. I've laid out a palette of colors using ultramarine, blue, burnt sienna, and titanium white. And I'm mostly working with high key colors, pastels. And so I've pre-mixed three very light toned blues, three very light toned burnt siennas. I've added, uh, I've neutralized each of those colors. So the, each is a little bit neutral because I don't, uh, I'm going for more of a subdued mood in my, uh, in my effects here. So uh, I'm going to be starting off with a, a flat brush and I'm just going to attack the glass itself and let's get started. Since my canvas has dried since last time I've been working on it, uh, about a day ago, I'm going to reactivate the surface by pouring a little bit of my 50-50 mix into a, a, a t-shirt and I'm going to reactivate the surface of my painting. Now you're going to see the pigment is going to be accepted much more nicely onto the surface of the canvas. All right, so let's start off with this flat. I'm dipping my brush into a little bit of the a solution that I made. Uh, I, you can use pure, at this point you can use pure linseed oil, or if you like that concoction, feel free to continue to use that as your medium. You see with the flat brush I can start to cover a lot of ground very quickly. Not really interested in blending at this point, so the flat brush is going to be just fine. Also what I'm going to do here, I think, making a decision on the fly, I'm just going to maybe quickly add a little a thin layer of white over the top of the glass. Since it all has to be toned down. Kind of knock down some of those dark values a little bit. Yeah, I like that better. Um, I can always bring back some of those darker values if I want. But this is going to radically alter the surface of the canvas and how the paint goes on. And I like that idea. Okay. All right. So it's like a thin, 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 thin film of white that now is got over the glass. And uh, now I'm going to go in with maybe a more of a middle tone, slightly a darker blue. Now, uh, these values may not be exactly as you see them in the object that you're painting, but it's really all about balancing the values within the painting once you start building up the values. So just like you uh, take a photo on your phone and you add a filter to it and you darken it or you lighten it, um, you can also uh, make the same kinds of decisions in your painting. You may decide, well, you know, I really want to boost the contrast or I want to darken the tone of the photograph or you may say, well, I want to lighten it up. I don't know. Um, so uh, one thing you can do also is take, uh, take a photograph of your still life and uh, put a filter on it and, and with your phone and uh, see, see if you can come up with an effect that you like and then attempt to uh, duplicate that effect with your paints, with your paint. I'm just staking out a kind of a middle value here. I don't want to lose all the details and the guidelines in my underpainting, so I'm not going to go too heavy. Remember, step light arrive heavy meaning add thin layers of paint in the beginning and then if you want the effect of thick paint of impasto you can add that you can build that up later there yeah looking good I really like this tone of blue, and you can see that it looks much more vibrant against that warm background. Now in my 
uh, in my still life, I can see that my foreground is a little bit warmer and my background is a little bit cooler. When we come to the background, I'll have to tackle that. Okay. All right. Now what I think I'm going to do is I want to edge in some of the darker shaded areas of the, of the still life. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my darker blue. And it may help to steady your hand if you use a stick to lean up against your canvas. Now what, I'm, what you can see, but what I'm doing is I'm adding a little bit of burnt sienna to my darker blue. You can see there, it's just a little more gray. And I'm just looking for those parts of the glass that have this, that share this kind of a darker value. And those places are very minimal. They're just on the edges of the glass. And the water line picks that up, that dark value, a little bit more. So let's grab some of this pigment and spread it out across here. Now when you do that, don't use a heavy hand. Uh, notice that it goes from darker to lighter. So I'm going to ease my touch up here in the middle part of this curve. I'm going to press more onto the brush there at the edge. And now here for the back part of this water line, I'm just going to put the brush on the edge of the line, the contour that I've identified. And this is where your underpainting comes in so handy because I can see those tones underneath. And I'm just going to pull down the pigment. Just like that. Now, it doesn't go all the way down to the edge. It does lighten up a little bit there, so I'll stop there. Okay, now the other place I have uh, an equivalent value is down here at the bottom. So let's add in that value down here. heavy shadow here right along the bottom and then a lighter shadow along the base of the glass which really makes it look like it's sitting on the surface of the tabletop gives it volume and weight which is exactly what we're after when we're done we want to feel as if we could reach out and grab that glass and pull it off the surface of the canvas now you see a little bit of a shadow that's being cast on the wall behind the glass. It's visible through the transparent glass. Ooh, that's too dark. So this should be a very light value. And I think my, I have to clean my brush, come back with a little, little bit of a lighter pigment. These darker values down here will come up to your eye first because they're heavier. But this shadow here, I want it to hang in the background. Now, I may have to darken it up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe not. Okay, that looks kind of good. I like that. Okay, so now I've got in my basic shadows here, but obviously there's a lot of work to be done. And what's um, what I think I'm going to do is look to maybe add a little more nuance up here in the top and work my way down. And that's going to mean probably bringing in some lighter values and uh, some darker tones along the edge to pick up 
the edges of the glass. So let's see, let's get a, grab a little bit of a slightly lighter pigment here, lighter blue. And uh, what I see here is a slightly lighter reflection. And that's going to uh, become very, very slightly less light as you move across this ellipse. And then on the other side of the glass, right here where I have this shadow, I'm going to give it a little bit more white. Now look how that makes that pop. And the other thing I'm seeing here are is the play of light along this edge, the, the rim of the glass. And this is very ambiguous, this lip right here. So ambiguous I can hardly tell where the inside of the glass ends and the rim of the glass begins. almost impossible to see, it almost disappears. What distinguishes it are not shadows, but the, the reflections that come here. So if I grab a little bit of a light pigment with my lighter blue, and I just edge that in, that's gonna help me to find that near part of the glass. This line's a little bit heavy. Let's blur that out a little bit. A couple of other highlights to put in here. Maybe one right here. Very light. 